Hello there and welcome to another Partners in Crime video. Today we're going to be showing you guys how to make a fast rendering shadow in the Blender viewport. This effect is really popular and gives a sharp modern appearance and can be used for anything from 3D shapes to animated motion graphics. So let's jump in the Blender and get started. Now the first thing you want to do is delete the default cube by typing X on your keyboard and clicking delete. Next, you want to type numpad 7 on your keyboard to go into the top view and type control and then alt to the numpad 0 to bring your camera into front view. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn off the grid floor and we're going to move this lamp out of view. So let's move this lamp out of view by right clicking on it, typing G, and then left clicking to move that over there. And type N to bring up the side viewport here. And uh, we will go to the display. Uncheck outline selected. We'll leave that checked for now. And then check everything else and click on X and Y. Okay. So now that we have this, uh, our empty scene here, we can add a plane. So you can either go into the top left of the screen here and click the create tab, or you can type shift A on your keyboard and click plane to add a plane. Now you can type S on your keyboard and you can type 5. Or you could just type S, move your cursor around, and left click the size that. We just want it size past the camera. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the material view here. And in the right of the screen, we're going to go into the material tab, select the new material, and we're going to make it an emit material. Okay, so let's add some text. Shift A and you can click text and type tab on your keyboard to erase the text and type your custom text. Your text tab and we'll add a new material to our text and we're going to make our text material a shadeless material and we're going to actually make it orange. Go into the font or text object data tab and scroll down and uh, click center. Let's move this down on the Y axis by left clicking holding on the Y on the green arrow. Let's move it down a little bit more on the Y. And that's looking good. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the background a little bit darker. We're going to make it a different color. So right click on that plane and change the color to blue. And uh, turn off the specularity for it and type uh, G, Z, and just uh, move your cursor until you can see your text again, and left click to confirm that. So you can see we've got our um, orange text with a blue background. Let's desaturate it a bit. Alright. So right click on this lamp here, and what we're going to do now is going to change it to a spot lamp. And you can see we have a, a flat text shadow there. Well, what we want to do now is um, let's change the buffer shadow. Now we're going to change it to buffer shadow, and we're going to leave the size there, and the amount of samples looks good. All right, so that's looking pretty nice. So the main thing you want to do is um, just in case your shadows don't show up as flat as they do as they should you can split the screen here in the bottom left and go into the user preferences and uh, make sure you have the window draw method set to multi sample at least the value of 8 and um, now we can uh, open GL render this but we're gonna put the anti-aliasing at full sample and uh, 16 and render open GL render image so you can see we've got our text with our shadow okay so let's go back into 3d view so type G to move your lamp and you can see the location of the lamp affects the shadow location so left click to confirm that and you can change the rotation of the lamp as well R Y and left click to confirm 
And you can change the size of the lamp so that's a bit larger and extends past the camera. Five, one thirty. All right, so one thirty is a good lamp size. So now you've pretty much got your text. And uh, one thing you can also do is you can go into the text object data tab. And uh, if you want to keep your flat text, that's good. We'll uh, shift D to duplicate this. Right click to cancel the movement and move this down on the Y. And uh, what we can do is we can make it extrude. And that'll just give you a nice long shadow. Okay, so uh, yeah. And you can continue to right click and just make sure your lamp is selected and just you can rotate around on the Y axis to get your shadow locations different. Or you can type RY twice until you get a preferable, preferable shadow rotation. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to rotate it off like that, left click confirm, and G and just left click that up there. So now we can get a really nice text shadow. We're going to extrude this a little bit more. 0 0.3 we will go with. And you can see the more we extrude, the longer the shadows. And uh, to make sure that the uh, lamp here doesn't render in OpenGL, you can turn off the visibility and you'll still get the light from the lamp. So let's increase the lamp size so that we don't uh, we don't get that uh, light fall off there. And uh, 175. All right. So that is looking pretty good. Again, you can uh, play around with all of the settings that you have here, and uh, you can also turn back on the lamp's visibility and make sure it's selected. Move it just up there and left click to confirm that. And uh, so, yeah, so we're pretty much finished with this tutorial. So, um, if you're looking for Blender intro templates or pre made Blender elements or anything else Blender, be sure to check out our site. Also, consider supporting our channel by buying our new clean Blender intro template, Splash. It's $1 and uh, updates for it are free. If you like your own custom or personal intro, shoot us an email using our business email in the description. Thanks a bunch for watching, subscribe for more, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.